Well, happy Sabbath, everyone. And would you please turn uh, to Revelation chapter 2, please? Revelation chapter 2. Now, the verses we're going to look at in Revelation 2 and chapter 3, these were covered in a sermon by Ray Statt six months ago in August of 2022. Now, these verses that I'm going to read here, 2 and 3, they either start with or are connected with the phrase, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now, I won't read this part of the verse because I want to emphasize the overcoming part of the verses. So I think you'll see what I mean. Let's start at verse 7, Revelation 2, verse 7. And uh, about halfway through the verse, it reads, verse 7, to him who overcomes... I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Let's go down to verse 11. It reads again, partway through. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. Down to verse 17. Again, to him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat, and I will give him a white stone. And on the stone, a new name written, which no one knows except him who receives it. Down to verse 26, and it reads, through, and he who overcomes, oh, this starts off, I'm sorry. And he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end, to him I will give power over the nations. Now, please turn to Revelation 3. We have to turn the page, as I have to... And we're going to start in verse 5. Verse 5, it reads, He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life. His name before my father and before his angels. Verse 12, down to verse 12, it reads, He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. And he shall go no more out, or go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God. And I will write on him my new name. And in verse 21, to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Now, these verses all have to do with overcoming. The word overcome in these verses, it means to achieve the victory, to conquer, to prevail over some enemy or opponent. Now, I know the people in God's church are overcomers. But I hope in this sermonette that it will encourage us to continue to be diligent overcomers. So in this sermonette, let us see what we need to overcome, why we should want to be overcomers, and how we can be overcomers. And the title of this sermonette is Be an Overcomer. Be an Overcomer. So, what is it we need to overcome? Well, we need to overcome, I call it the three S's. Satan, self, and society. We need to overcome Satan. In our modern Western societies, we normally don't experience the kind of persecution and suffering that the early Christians experienced. Our enemy doesn't come to us with a sword or a spear and threats of physical harm if we don't forsake God. Most of us today face a different strategy from our enemy, Satan's deception. In Revelation 12, 9, it says that Satan, our enemy, has deceived the whole world. Deception can be so subtle that we don't even think of it as an enemy. We need to be very vigilant in overcoming Satan because our adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. We also need to overcome the self, our sinful human nature. Jeremiah 17, 9, it says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. John 3.19 says, And this is the condemnation, that the light, 
Jesus Christ has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. We must constantly be overcoming our sinful human nature by putting off the old sinful man and putting on the new man, which is being created by God. We also need to overcome society, this world. This present evil age of government, business, entertainment, and media, it, it just seems to get more ungodly by the day. <coughs> we as Christians, we are being spiritually assaulted by our societies to accept the new normal of sinfulness. We must not give in to the sins of society. God calls upon his people today to exercise the kind of commitment needed to overcome the sin that so easily ensnares us. So that's what we, we have to overcome, those, those three things. Well, why? why? Why is it we should want to be overcomers? Reading about all the wonderful promises overcoming brings in Revelation 2 and 3 that we just read, the right to eat from the tree of life, protection from the second death, power over the nations, and so on. Well, should, these should be reasons enough for why we should want to be overcomers. Let's look at a specific reason why we should want to be overcomers. Please turn to Revelation 21, and we're going to read for, uh, verses 3 and 4. So over to Revelation 21. And all my verses I'm using today are from the book of Revelation. Why? Why should we want to be overcomers? Three and four. And verse three. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And verse four. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Think of how it would be to live in a world where there's no pain, no mourning, no suffering. A world filled with the love of God. The world is coming. And it's the promised inheritance to overcomers. Under the rulership of our Father in Jesus Christ, overcomers will have the amazing blessing of helping to bring many sons to glory. We will be able to help billions of other people achieve the greatest promise of all, becoming members of the God family. That is why we should want to be overcomers. Well, how can we be overcomers? Well, let's look at two ways that we can use to help us to be an overcomer. And these two ways we are already very, very familiar with. The first one is controlling our thoughts. All sin begins in the mind. Our minds are the true battleground in our spiritual war. Controlling our thoughts is the key to overcoming. The book of James says, but each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin and sin when it is full grown, brings forth death. Since sin begins with desire and desire is formed in the mind, overcoming sin must begin in the mind. The overcomer must learn to take charge of his thoughts. When a temptation to commit sin arises, we immediately put away the tempting thought and replace it with wholesome thoughts. If we have a problem, name a sin. It could be lying, coveting, stealing, whatever it is, we can overcome our problem by replacing the evil thought at the very instant it comes to mind. Simply put it out. Never allow such a thought to remain in our mind, not even for a moment. The longer it's there, the more likely we are to give in and commit sin. I was thinking this morning as I was praying, I was thinking about this, and I don't have this in my notes, but it, it's almost like that game, I think they call it whack-a-mole. As I said, where it was a pop comes into your mind, you know, you're trying to put it out. You, the, the game, you whack one mole, another one pops up. You whack that one, another one pops up. That's, that's ours. That's what I'm talking about here, you know. Uh, now, reading the Word of God daily 
It will help us replace those evil thoughts and temptations that come our way. By filling our mind with the things of God, we will have more helpful information to draw upon in forming good thoughts to combat the bad ones. We can carry Bible scriptures in our pocket. Use our smartphone Bible app to look up scriptures. Up scriptures. When a, when a sinful thought enters our minds, we can take out a Bible scripture and read it and meditate on it. Memorizing scriptures it certainly makes the process of replacing our thoughts easier. And Philippians 2.5 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. A second way, and I said these are very, very familiar to us, the second way that we can use to help us be an overcomer is prayer. Sounds so easy, <laughs> but that's what we need. Every day we need to go to the throne of grace and pray to God for help in overcoming. Each morning, ask God to give us the help we need for that day. And before retiring for the evening, close the day with a prayer of thanksgiving for the help we did receive that day. Be specific in our prayers. Our Father, he wants only good things for us and wants to help us. He loves us. God's Holy Spirit, we know it gives us a sound mind. Pray for God's Holy Spirit and that sound mind every day. Romans 12, 21 says, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. As we approach the Passover and days of unleavened bread, let us continually in daily prayer or in daily Bible study and prayer, let's continue with that every day. And this will surely help us in our lifetime of overcoming sin. So in conclusion, as Christians, being an overcomer offers great rewards. Let us be pleasing to our Father and to Jesus Christ and strive to be diligent overcomers. For a closing scripture, we're in Revelation 21 now. Let's read verse 7. Revelation 21 for, and verse 7 for our closing scripture. It reads, verse 7, He who overcomes shall inherit all things. And I will be his God. He shall be my son. Happy Sabbath.